You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined today by someone who I've wanted to have on for a long time now, Margaret McAfee, McAfee Home Designs. How in the world are you? I am so good. Thank you so much for thinking of me and having me. I, I've been really excited for, for you to join because I've watched your journey yet since you left us here in, in, in <laughs> Orlando and, and, and went up north to go out on your own. And um, it's been really cool to watch. And, you know, part of what we're doing with, um, with Zengig, and of course, we talk about on the Finding Careers in podcast, is that a career is a winding journey. It, it doesn't follow a straight Absolutely. line. And yours has, has been winding, my friend. Yes, That's very much so. Sure. Yes. So, so, so let's, let's go back before we, we sure. get the current. Um, we, you and I worked together for um, how many years? Six, seven? Seven. Seven, mm -hmm. seven years. And this was pre-Mrs. Um, McAfee. It was yep. pre four four girls. It, yes. it, it was pre first home that you bought, yes. right? So this yep. was I guess you were probably engaged, right? When, I was engaged. I was recently engaged. Um I got engaged at Christmas and then I think I started with you guys in like about summer-ish time. Okay. So you came to work um for Four Corner Resources, our recruiting firm, and you, you were starting yep. off. You were not long out of school, right? Uh, was this your first? Yeah, job? I was in I had worked previously in management and retail. Um, and that was hard, very hard. Um, and this was more of a one of my previous sorority sisters and also who worked in retail had reached out to me about Four Corner. And I'm like, the worst thing that could happen is I interview and learn interview skills and took off from there. And so you guys, you, you had a hospitality degree, right? I actually go figure, have a marketing degree. You do. Okay. I thought I, I do. Okay. Yeah. Which I had never quite used until now. Here we are. So, you, but you'd worked really hard and, and that, that was something we had identified um, in those days that people from retail, especially retail management, you know, college grads right. had to work re you know, really long hours. And, and so that work ethic was instilled, you know, for, to, to young professionals, which is hard to come by, but you right. of course had that. And, um, you know, that was, was obvious from the day you walked in our doors. Yeah. yeah. I also had during college worked in the hospitality industry, which I think lent really well to the recruiting industry as well. Again, long hours, you're talking to people you don't know all the time. So there was, there were quite a few transitions that worked well. So you, you recruited it for, for a while and we, we, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you earned a promotion because you showed that you were, um, you were driven and motivated and really all the, the traits um, that, that you know, anyone wants to see in a sales professional. So when you moved into that sales role, now that that wasn't quite as uh, as it, he didn't have immediate success in that and correct it's a story, yeah. I, I've told this story a lot uh, over the years. If your ears are ever ringing, um, it, it may be because <laughs> I've told the story. You you start off in sales and then you you had um, you had baby number one, right? Mm -hmm. Millie was born, yeah, and. At that time, you hadn't really um, had much sales success. And I remember when you came, no. the whole time you were gone out on maternity leave, I was thinking, man, I got, I'm got. i going to have to talk to Margaret and y'all offer the opportunity to go you know, back in recruiting for a while. I don't want yeah. to get frustrated with sales. And I remember, I'm sure you do too, that that conversation mm -hmm. the day you came back and I, I brought this up and you were, you were like, absolutely not. I am not <laughs> going backwards. I am going to be successful in this. And it, you were so just confident and, and, and committed to success or that, <laughs> right? But damn it, you, you absolutely yes. delivered on that to a significant degree. And it's one of my favorite stories because you, 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 you just, you just knew you were going to figure it out. And, and that was yeah. such a cool thing. And I think that's so important in sales. So do you, do you remember that as vividly as I do? Oh, yes. I can remember that massive office of yours and your very old ugly furniture which of course <laughs> i i would remember of all the designer of all things um but yes i re and i remember another employee sitting there as well i i totally remember the conversation but for me i'm also an incredibly competitive person and for someone to tell you maybe this wasn't the right time we could look at it again it was never you were never telling me like you have to do this or you're fired it was never an ultimatum type of conversation it was more of a we want to see you succeed and you were successful in the recruiter role so maybe we should go back there for a minute and then maybe consider sales and to me that was like no like you were pissed no, I, I can do this yes like i will do this and i will prove you wrong and so that's 
kind of the motivation it took. And I also think once it clicks, it clicks in that role or maybe in even any sales role. And it took a couple of wins for it to click. So once you get those wins, I think that also helps. So why why do you think, well, let's talk about that just for a minute. Uh, why do you think that that, how did that become instilled in you that you, whether it's competitiveness, you know, drive, whatever that it factor is where, you know, you say stubborn. I mean, I don't, you could come up with lots of different phrases, but sure. it was, it, to me, it was just you know, a steadfast commitment that no, you, you are going to make this happen and figure it out. Mm-hmm. And I think that is such a hard thing to find in, in people. Um, where, do you, do you think about that and know why and how that was implanted? I think, and I could be completely off, but I think a lot of it is with how I was raised. Um, I, I, saw my mom and dad work incredibly hard. Um, when we were in sports, it was a, you're part of a team. You will not let your team down. So you will practice, you will, you know, all these things that as a kid, you know, you could say, not that my parents pushed us into like, you will be a scholarship winning student and go to college and professional sports, but more so like, if you're dedicating yourself to something, you're going to dedicate yourself and you're going to be a good human and a good person at that versus just kind of like, eh, do it when you want to, you know, and it was that way with school, church, sports, everything in our life. It, it, if you're going to do it, do it right. Correct. I mean, 100%. And, and so you, you were part of a time uh, where when we were working and, and and you you did succeed you succeeded to a, v- a very significant degree in, in your sales role um mm-hmm. you you played a number of roles for us at, at um at four corner in management and um you 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 were willing to um to do whatever um you know, we needed to do at the time which is incredibly right. valuable you know it made you a very valuable employee which i think you probably were conscious of as well um right. but you also were were witness to um that being really hard to come by, and and why why do you think that is? And and I you know um, it's a leading question because now you're a parent. How, how old is is Millie now? She's nine. So you started having children five years after you know, I stopped, and so my right. oldest is crazy to say is now twenty. I know, which is wild, right? I know. Um, and and my youngest is fourteen, and so I think there had been a shift beginning where pa- parents who were my age. Uh, it, realizing this shift in the, in this, hopefully this will make sense in with young professionals who were about your age, right? So when your, your age group um, did not have that same work ethic, you know, did, right. you know, instilled. And I think parents of my generation kind of started realizing that and reverting back to some old school um, ways of, of, of parenting. But what do you see is that trend now um, with parents? Is it, is it still the the participation trophy approach and the kids that need to be successful and happy all the time? And, or is it more of, Hey, you know, you got to earn, you got to earn it along the way. Um, I think, sorry, my screen went really small because someone phone called me. So I was trying to figure out how to make it bigger again. Um, I think, gosh, it's an interesting mix. So now that my, so here, kids um at the schools don't get to start sports until fifth grade okay um so it's definitely different than there where it's like preschool and they're starting sports so you see these kids who are in sports now and like so intense into it um but then you also see the opposite side of it so i think it's still a pretty good mix of and not just sports, like I say sports, because that's the common, you know, easy to understand. Um, but I definitely think it's a mix. I, you know, I see some kids who were, you know, they don't want to go to school today. So their parents are like, meh, and that's all the time. Um, okay. It's not, you know, I do it every once in a while when my kids are like very tired or they're up late, but it's like an all the time thing. It's like, well, you know, are we really teaching them that it's okay just to be like, you know, because then you think about it translates into the work world, you know, oh gosh, I was too hungover. I was out late last night or I'm just sad today. So maybe I shouldn't go to work and it's okay to have those days. I'm not saying it's not, but you can definitely see how it translates from younger kids to the adult life. Yeah. And it, and it, well, it's, um, 
it's been an interesting thing to watch. And I, and I'm curious, I, I, I'll continue to come back to you over the years to hear this because I, um, it's a concern for me. It's a, yeah. it, it, it's not you know, some of the parenting changes that, that have um, taken place over the last 30 years um, haven't necessarily served us well, right? Haven't served, right. you know, those, those children who became adults eventually you know, have to realize life is hard, realize right. that someone's not going to be there to save you and that you're not always going to win. Um, right. I think that th- those, those traits are, um, the sooner they're instilled, the better. And and I know you and I are in alignment on that. Um, yes. and so it's not surprising for me to hear you say you were raised that way because yeah. you, know, you kind of have to have that exposure from somewhere, but you, you, you did have it. it. You, you were so, is that, is that one of the reasons why, I mean, you had success in our environment where you had to eat what you kill, right? There was nothing yeah. to be handed to you, as you well know. Um, did that translate and, and help you have the confidence to go out on your own when, when you made that decision? So for those, I guess that probably are listening and don't know, um, I'll kind of give like a background of where I'm at in my life. Um, so when my husband and I made the decision to move to Indiana, which is where we live now and where his family lives, it was like a, a very <laughs> random conversation that happened when I was on maternity leave at one point with our third daughter. Um, and I always struggled to come back from maternity leave, not because you know I didn't want to be back in my job, but it was just emotionally hard for me to leave my children. Um, and so it was kind of like, okay, like, let's consider this. And to me, I thought, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm not going to work when we move, I'm going to stay at home and I'm going to go volunteer at my kid's school all the time. I'm going to do all these things. So fast forward to us moving here and we're six months in and welcome COVID. I can't walk into my kid's school. Uh, I have met no parents basically because, I can't volunteer. I can't when at school pickup, you can't go out and talk to people. Um, no one is comfortable being around other people. Of course, I had the it was really nice to move here because my husband had a lot of friends here. So in turn, I had the ability to meet a bunch of wives and things like that. So I did have friends. I wasn't isolated. But from a, a perspective in my mind, if I'm going to be the stay at home mom, that's always at school and always doing these things. And it was like completely gone and taken that ability was taken away from me for almost what a year and a half. Um, so over half the time that I had lived here. Um, and so I had started journeying, I guess, vlogging essentially my, our home we purchased needed renovated. Um, and so I had received a lot of feedback from people who were friends. This is really cool. You should keep doing this. Like, I love seeing this kind of home stuff. So I thought, okay, I mean, it's just stories. I might as well put it up on Instagram. Well, that started to grow. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, I guess being an influencer, I don't really enjoy that term. I much would rather say content creator. Okay. Um, we, we had a debate about that at dinner last night, by the way. The, it, well, what, they're very what different. What is an influencer? We tried to define it well, with, my, with my teenagers. I would think they're both, right? You know, you have to create the content, which I'm really horrible <laughs> at lately. Uh, but we'll get into that. Um, and it just kind of transitioned into something. And I started... DIYing in our house um, because we just weren't going to spend the money on having tradespeople come in and do the work when I knew I could do it myself. Um, and then it just became something where I was teaching myself how to build furniture, how to do major renovations in a house. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And I just grew my Instagram from there. Um, so I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that the like you said, the path was very winding and I wouldn't say the plan went as planned by any means because this none of this was in the plan. Well, but um, it, like, I have to say though, and, and I, so I tried to talk you into, to, you know, you were physically moving and yes. I tried to talk you into to stay in and remote, continue yes. to work for, for us, right? Which is the irony being we are 100% virtual. Remote, now, I right? know, <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> so, but but you had we offered you that option and you you still turned it down a very attractive offer I will say but um, the the uh, the 
you know, those of us who knew you, uh, you know, professionally were very skeptical that you would be satisfied to not work. And so COVID may have been the catalyst for, for, for that. Um, and there always seems to be a catalyst, right? I had, sure. you know, uh, something that was my catalyst for starting you know, a business and, and going out on my own. Um, that story always exists, but do you think you would have ended up there anyway? I mean, do you think you, yeah, you know, let's say COVID hadn't happened, you know, you'd be in the, the homeroom mom. I mean, it just doesn't, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't I mean, think that you would be satisfied with that um, because you're so driven just to do. I think for me, it was always um, having the ability to have more time with my children. But yes, I think I would have needed some sort of, whether it was a project or some sort of goal. I'm very like goal driven, you know, um, I would have probably needed something there. And I don't think I ever knew it was going to come in the form of content creating, influencing. And now I'm as of this year, moving more into the design world. Um, so no, I don't, I don't, I think I would have still needed something, but I don't think I knew what that was. Right. Well, and that's such an interesting point because one one of the reasons why Zengig exists. So Zengig that in this this podcast wouldn't wasn't something that was on our radar screen when when you left. Um, right. But what uh, we have realized being in staffing that people typically end up in a in a career not because it was their choice or their dream as a child. You know, was, my joke is always no one dressed up as a recruiter for Halloween when they yes, were little. Yes. We know that, um, but how you end up where you are is is coincidental as much as anything else unless you have the right um, catalyst or right. support encouragement to step back and really consider these things before you get locked in on a path and that's why we thought Zengig was so important for young people in particular who don't really get that advice I don't know if right. you did growing up but um, yeah, I was told yeah, effectively, you know, get a job. That's what the world kind of tells you. Get a degree, you get college, a job. And then you get a job. Yep. Who the hell knows what they're, you know, you, you, was this ever even, I mean, I know you were into, 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 you know, fashion and you, you were very particular about your, your, you know, decorating your house. I, I remember that, right. but yeah, it was it never like, like, I never went to college and was like, gosh, I wonder if I could be a designer one day. Like that was never a thought of mine. It was just always a passion. Um, and I think when you, I mean, I listen to a ton of designer podcasts and when you listen to them, I would say 99% of them never went to school, um, for design, okay. just never, or they went for a semester and then they were like, yeah, I got this. I'm out. And then they just went out and did their thing. Um, I think it's a very like creative based career. It was, it's it's interesting you would say it the way you just did because I've recently um, had a thought that I've shared a few times shared with my my um, my oldest college student my only college student of the four right now has changed his degree a couple times still not right. completely locked into what he uh, wants to do and I've said do do the pursue the thing that you go to bed thinking about you know, provided it's not like you know, video games or you know, I was going to say that he's going to be a professional college gamer. Related. That's right, right, right. Okay. Um, but what what is the thing you you spend you know, that consumes your thoughts when yeah. you have nothing else to do? You know, free time if you're out exercising. What is the podcast that you're listening to, and pursue that? And and maybe it is video games, right? I mean, we joke about right. it, but yeah, you know, my my son is creative. He's he's um you know he's currently majoring in um in in programming or it, it some whatever the degree is actually called. So yes, a path in video games might may be viable, yeah. but you listen to design podcasts and mm -hmm. that was your passion and interest. And in, you, you may roll your eyes when you hear me say this, but uh, because it's, it, I've evolved in, in this thinking, Margaret, that I think you should try to combine your passion and your career wherever possible. And that's something that I didn't used to subscribe to necessarily. I, I, um, you know, I've had to to grow into that over the years, but yeah. You know. And I, I think a lot of that too also is with the times, right? Because like you said, you, when you were growing up, it's you leave high school, you go to college, you're there for your, hopefully four years, and then you're going straight into your career and you're on that path for, you know, 50 years until you retire, whatever it may be. 
Um, but I think now there are a lot of promotions around maybe take a year off when you graduate college and go get a job and see what it's like, or don't go to college, go into a trade professional world because good ones are far and few between and they can make a ton of money. Um, we have a place here in Fort Wayne that just opened called the AMP Lab, and it's all about different ways to do schooling for students. Um, about around, they have a podcast studio. They have a um, studio on um, like music studio for people to create music. They have an ag like an indoor agriculture area, and this is all for kids that can go there and learn all this stuff. Wow! So okay. it's really interesting to see how education and the way that we parents, society, whatever it may be, are enabling children to learn in different ways and have opportunities, except high school, college, straight into your career for the next 30 years. Well, the education system is, is not ideal. I think we know that. Uh, when you look at you know, and you're experiencing this now, of course, in real time, yes. as am I still with with my two in high school, where it's not exactly a one size fits all scenario, but it's pretty right. darn close where yeah. you know, there aren't that many kids in any given scenario that just happen to be born in the same geography or go to the same private school that should be right. you know, exposed to the same things. And I, I don't have the solution, so I can't criticize it too much other than to say programs like the one you're describing parents, I would love to see more parents um, you know, kind of step back and, and realize this. And it's hard because there's just, the world's not set up that way or our society, right. I should say, I can't speak to the right. rest of the world. It's just not set up that way. It's, it's, you know, at a young age, no one is telling you to you know, go off on your own and explore yes. your, your, your true passion. Yeah. And I think what's going to take that change is people to understand. And what I love about this podcast and Zen gig is that they're giving the opportunity to say, it's okay to not be straight and narrow for your adult career and to understand what that is. Like, it's okay to have the winding path to get to where you want to be. So could you, so here's the real test. Could you, you know, if Millie, your oldest comes to you oh, and Jake, your husband and says, I'm not going to school. I, I want to go out and, and, you know, pursue something, um, yeah, you know, uh, just just that that you know doesn't necessarily sound like it would lead to financial um, success, right? And that's something that I know you're very conscious of, um, and and have always been responsible with that. You know, from the the day I met you, I know you were very serious about um, you know, just just being um, frugal at times, but also just being just responsible for for lack of way to you know older you know than 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 your age maybe in that regard, and that's right. that's a big compliment. Um, coming from you know, someone who sees that, that is, uh, you know, that's a rare thing too. So yeah. if if your daughter came to you with that and said, I'm not going to college, it's not my path, it's not my future. Are you okay with that? I actually, yes. And we're probably like more on the opposite end than you would think where if our, like Jake very much so he's a, he, Jake is a consumer. He consumes podcasts and information all day long. He's a huge Gary Vee fan. Okay. Um, he also is a big, I don't know if you know, Jordan Peterson. Of course. Um, yes. And he's a big Jordan Peterson fan for parenting. Um, and so he is very much in the mind of definitely don't feel like you need to go to college. Okay. Is that, yeah. how prevalent is that thought process uh, or that way of thinking rather among your peer group, would you say? I think it's pretty prevalent. Okay. Um, and we're, rather like you know we're not on the far liberal end of the spectrum by any means but i think it's i think it's pretty prevalent um i just think that there's so many call it first of all the cost of college is just absurd right um and so you see these kids that are getting into like major debt and like my husband i was fortunate enough to have my family pay for my college and my husband had to pay for everything on his own. So he, when we first met, he had just gotten out of college and he, I mean, he worked all the time so that he could pay. All he wanted to do was pay his college loans off. We were rarely going on dates. Like, you know, it was very much, he didn't want to be in debt. And so I think that for him, he 
kind of saw that and where that got him. And that got him into a job that he didn't love. And then he left that job and is now a realtor where you don't need to go to college and is very successful. Yeah. And, and not, not to make this about finances, but you mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk and one of the things that if you, if you listen to him at all, I'm sure Jake do, uh, yeah. at the very least has you know, shared lots of thoughts um, yeah. o- over time, but one of his messages is, you know, while you're young, that's when you have to, 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 to grind and, mm-hmm. and to work hard. And, and it's something that I think really ties so much of this together is success doesn't come early. You have to be able to delay gratification. I mean, it could come early if you get lucky, right? Everyone can hit, anyone could hit the lottery, but no one should count on it. Um, And instead put in the work. And and what I saw you guys doing was um, you, I, I I don't know if you've held true to this. I'm not putting you on the spot for it, but back then you said, we we're not going to have any debt. We're going to pay cash for everything we do. And that means delaying gratification to a significant degree, which very few and people we still are. do. Okay. The only debt we have is our house, our mortgage. And what, I mean, but that gives you so much freedom, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's why you were able to, to leave um, what I think you would agree was a, a, a high income job. Um, yeah. Just, I don't think there were many people that were 30 years old making the money I made. No, um, probably I don't still think there's many people in America, right? Percentage wise, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> making the money you were making back then. I mean, and mm-hmm. so you walked away from it completely, and uh, yeah. with no income on the other side. Now you've 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 you're in a different place now, but um, you couldn't have done that unless you were frugal and responsible from a young age, right? Yeah, and. and- We were, I mean, we still don't, and it could be, you know, the four children, four young children, but we don't really haven't gone on any like lavish vacations or anything like that. And of course it's our dream too. Um, But I think the kids kind of really delayed that (laughs) quite a bit because I don't know, taking four young kids on vacation doesn't sound like much of a vacation quite honestly, but um, you know, we see the ability to, like you said, grind now and invest while we're at this age to be able to do those things later in life. So I'll, I'll jump in just real quickly. You're, this is unsolicited advice as someone who's a little ahead of you with, with the kids is I regret vacations we didn't take. I don't really? regret any that we did and that we've spent more for years. I didn't until I, I don't know that there was a catalyst for that too. It was the first, it was an opportunity to go out West for, um, for a ski yeah. trip this was probably 12 years ago and it was at a, at a great resort. And we just, for whatever reason said, you know what, let's do it. And on paper, it didn't make a lot of sense um, necessarily. And we did. And that changed my whole perspective and is why we're able to take the kids to Europe and and after and and see other parts of the world. So I, 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 uh, I just, for, for what it's worth, I, um, the, because you, yeah, I've I've bought into this mindset of spending on experiences more than mm-hmm. material things, and yes, um, very much so. And so, you know, there's but look, everyone's got to do what's right for themselves, and and uh, that's that's what you're doing. So so let's go back to to what you what you're actually having success with now. So you yeah. started off you know, putting up content. You, you mm-hmm. just did. Did you follow any any um. Did you, did you, did you, were you, did you do, I'm sure you did research. Did you, did you, how did you kind of evolve in this? Yeah. So the content creator community is very helpful. Um, if you find the right people. Um, so I think that really helped. I also, um, Jake has always been very supportive and very much so like invest in yourself, invest in yourself, invest in yourself. And so I took a, um, this will shock you probably. I took a pitching class, a sales pitching class okay. Okay. Um, for content creators, pitching to brands, right? Um, and that at the time was $500, which was so much money to me. To That's invest a lot. In. That's a lot of money to spend. $500. I'm like, Ooh, this is so much money. So I did it. And that was definitely a big catalyst of me understanding the world that is content creation and working with brands, because there's a bunch of different, you know, you could be influencer, um, who works with brands and does a lot. There's, so there's kind of two categories in my three, I guess, in my opinion, you just put links out there and you can make a commission off of links. Right. 
or you make money by working with brands. Um, you're promoting their products, whatever it may be, or there's people who do both. Um, for a while I did both. And then I started, when I took that class, started working with brands, had the ability to pitch myself. Um, there's a lot of platforms that, uh, you can put out your like resume, so to say, uh, it's called a media kit and it shows the brands you've worked with your, um, your like stats of your followers, all these different things. Um, and brands can come to you after seeing that, or you can just sit back and wait for brands to send you a DM or an email or whatever it may be. I found myself not loving working with brands um, because you're essentially working for someone else again. Um, And there's a lot of boundaries that (laughs) they don't like being set. Um, And, you know, they, they, in my opinion, don't value what it takes for a content creator to create content and all that goes into it and the time. Um, Monetarily, it's not as lucrative as it should be. Okay. It is, it is super time. I mean, in the things that you do don't, they're not quick, right? You're not just making, you know, quick videos of, of like twirling a dress or something like that. that, Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, you're you're doing projects and you're doing projects. You're having to think of the content. You're having to shoot the content. You have to edit it. Then you have to send it to a brand and typically they have to approve or deny it. Um, So it's, I mean, you are literally, like if you think of a TV commercial, think of all the things that go into that. And then it's the same thing as a content creator. You're still having to do all of those things, but you're one person. Now there are people who make crazy good money doing content creation for brands. And that's, you know, I'm not knocking it by any means. It just wasn't for me. Okay. So then, so then what, so where did you, where, where did this lead then? Where, uh, no, I, I shouldn't say it's not for me. I still do work with some brands every once in a while that are, I have worked with multiple times and are very good with their expectations. And I feel like respect what we do. Okay. Um, so I, as of this year, so I started to do a lot of design and I got asked to do a lot of design work. Um, and I was doing some e-design, which is like, you meet with someone via video and they show you their space and then you send them back like a virtual design. You never see them in person or anything like that. And it was like, it was okay. It got my feet wet, but I didn't like love it. Well, I got asked last year by an old neighbor in Orlando actually to design their new build. And they were demolishing their old house and building a new house. And so I thought, okay, this is a killer opportunity for myself to learn a lot. The client was the right type of client for me as a first time designer. Um, and the budget was fantastic. And the, the style was my style. So I'm like, all the stars were kind of aligning. So let's give it a go. Um, and so we're still working on that house. That'll be done hopefully in June. Um, And so that was a really, that was kind of like the, oh, wow, I really enjoy this like full scale design versus just like, I've never been there. I don't, you know, like just like a quick sketch up online. Um, And then I got asked again and then I got asked again. And so I'm like, okay, this is kind of something. And I don't particularly put my services out online. Um, I show, you know, I'm doing design for a client, but I've never once told anyone Hey, if you're interested in my design work, let me know. Um, And right now I'm kind of at the, um, at full capacity with my three projects that I have. So I decided that this year, 2023 would be the year to invest in my design business. Um, And so I recently signed on with a company to do branding. Um, So they're creating this. And by recently, I mean, like, I don't know, two days ago. So <laughs> they're Teresa, doing this is good timing. Okay. Yes. Yes. So they're doing all the branding for myself. Um, and they're doing website for myself. So I should have all of that up and running in the next couple of months and be a little more legit. So so the evolution is you started from scratch doing your own projects, putting it out for yes. the world to 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 like, criticize, comment on, whatever it might all be, give, give you feedback in real time. Mm-hmm. And through that, 
you know, you it, opportunities presented themselves to you, and and you you know that you know, evolved to you finding something that um, it combined you know a uh, uh, and I'm and I wish I could think of the actual quote I saw recently that this described this, but effectively it was what you like doing, what you're good at doing, and what the world sees value in, right? Mm-hmm. And, and like if you can combine those things, well, that's that's how success right. happens in, in this world, and. So you were able to do that, but you couldn't have foreseen this, the end point, right? I mean, you, it sounds no. like you were kind of going without this. You, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you kind of knew something was there and you, you but you couldn't probably you know, wrap a bow around it either. Yeah. And I, I feel like this, this first project that I got really was the, the main driver of this in my life. Like I always enjoyed doing it in my own home and looking at the things online. And like I said, consuming the podcast, but to really be like hands on into this, it's just been such an experience. And just, I mean, I, like you said to your son, I think about that at night. I think about it when I wake up, like it's the stuff that's really the passion side of your career. Well, we, we didn't, um, we haven't caught up live with an extended conversation in, in years. And so we yeah. decided to kind of do this without um, any script or even spending much time catching up. We talked for maybe five right. minutes before we started recording today, but I, I don't know that um, you know this, but when I, you, you were still um, you know with Four Corner when we uh, hired our first marketing agency and right. you can probably remember that our website was five pages. It was awful. Um, we didn't a have lot a clue what we were doing. Remember there was a point where we started writing blogs and I'm, I'm using air quotes with that oh, yeah. because we didn't know what the hell, <laughs> we yes. just thought, yes. you know, we, I, we, by the way, here, we still have them. Huh? Mm-hmm. I said, it's, put this, put these words here. Someone will come read it. That's right. Well, and, and I would say out loud, um, I'm a, I should be embarrassed to say, but I have to own it that I like, what the heck would you put on a staffing company website? Like what content would you even put? Well, here we are you know, four and a half years later, five years later, really, and almost, and I've, it is my obsession and, and passion that um, I never would have imagined. And I stumbled into that. Um, you know, I still love the recruiting business, of course, but this is the thing that um, has just brought me energy and enthusiasm and and just excitement in a way that I, I never imagined. And we started one, we did everything one step at a time and we made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes along the way. But through that, we've been able to learn. And right. I, I think it's um it's hard to do. I mean, it 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 at at my age, it's hard to do. It's it's unique to have that opportunity. And even even with you, I mean you're you're quite a bit younger than me, of course, but as an adult, you you got to reinvent yourself, which it takes the right, right. circumstances and is hard. And to me, that's why this your story and hopefully to some degree my story and is is relevant to young people because you 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 know you you weren't good at it necessarily out of the gate right i i you you weren't right. where you are out of the gate you had to evolve you had to go through it and you had to put in time and i've watched you put in that time right i've watched you um improve the, the way you um you communicate online your your comfort with it you know, the way yeah. the, the the stuff that you put out i'm sure you look back at some of your old videos and laugh right maybe oh, well there was a new feature i don't know if it's a new feature on instagram or what but it was like a where the story bubbles are and it was a memory bubble and i clicked it today and i was like well let's see and it was like i guess just the past years is kind of like what facebook does and it was like this video and there was this horrific filter on my face. And I was like, what was I doing? Why, why did I do that? It was, yeah. So yes, it was, that's a very timely comment. But like Gary Vaynerchuk would recommend, um, you know, his, his whole message is put yourself out there. Don't, don't, yes. don't hesitate. Don't wait. Don't try to be right. perfect or great early. It's okay not to be in. Right. Um, I certainly, you know, have come to appreciate that in a way that I couldn't have without going down the path. Right. Like from yeah. the outside looking in. And I, of course, kick myself every day when I think about marketing um, that I ignored it for the first 13 years that we were in business. And yeah. I think, man, where could I be now right? <laughs> if if I know. we had done something differently? But also, you don't know until you know. And, and right. it, again, it, 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 when you're young, you have the time and it may not feel like that 
but that's part of such an important part of the message I'm trying to get out with, with, with Zengig is do it while you don't have you know, four kids. <laughs> while yes. you don't have, I mean, I, I quit my job when I had two, you quit your job when you had, well, three, three. I yeah. guess so soon to yeah. be four. Um, and, and it's, and it's you know, like the time to do it is when you're young. Do you, do you agree with that? Yes, a hundred percent. But I also, I think it's important to say that, and I, feel a lot of this from Gary Vee and obviously my own experience that it's okay to want to change when you're older, right? Like, don't feel like you can only do it when you're young, but yes, like get out there and explore and figure out what you like and what you're passionate about when you're young. Don't feel like you need to go into a job because it makes you 30 K and that's what you can pay the bills, you know, figure out how you can grind so that you're able to do your passion. Yeah, one of the things I tell parents uh, or tell kids if they were getting out of school and I, I'll tell the parents to you know, cover their ears um, is go, if you know that thing, and it's a rare gift if you do, right? If you, right. you know, Especially at that age. But, but I would think, I mean, I, this is a little sidetrack, but do you think you could have been prepared to uh, go on your own and do it the way you've done it. Had have you not had the professional experience and success that you mm, had? That's hard. And the trials and tribulations and, and, you know, frustrate you. Look, I mean, you, I doubt it. You, yeah. You had to, you experienced a lot of good and bad through, mm-hmm. through that time as yeah. you know, we've, you know, could talk for days about, about all yeah. those stories and it wasn't always easy and it, the success didn't necessarily come quickly as we talked about um, when you went into right. sales, but you had to deal with, you know, management issues and, and, you know, everything that a small yeah. business has to deal with, but that, you know, you learn from each of those things. And I, I know that I, when I thought of starting my first company, you know, I first want to start what now became my staffing business 10 years prior, no way I was prepared. I needed that 10 years in between to gain professional knowledge and experience. Yeah. I mean, my time there was, you know, and what I learned. And I even say this about my time in retail. Like I was, and I, maybe it's just me and I try to take away something from every experience. But I mean, in retail, I was fresh out of college and running a multi million dollar store, like the most, the busiest store for this brand in all of the world. I was running and I was employing a hundred people. Like what? <laughs> Why? Why would, would someone give you that me? responsibility? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why would someone like say that this is okay? Yeah. You're, you know, 21 years old. Sure. You can run a multi-million dollar store and employ a hundred people. Like, so I think all of those experiences lead to, you know, how you can deal with your future and whatnot. And same with obviously at 4CR, it was, you know, I was, still, I would call myself fresh out of college. I mean, I was only yep. what, two years out, a year and a half out. And I'm talking to grown adults about how much money they make, which is still a very, to me, it's a very normal conversation. <laughs> I'm like, Oh yeah, how much do you make? But then I have to remind myself, okay, that's not normal. Like is it was normal to you because you were in staffing for seven years, but you know, you get put into those situations where it's like, you, you have to be comfortable with it. And I think that a lot of that experience created professional development for myself. I, I remember the awkwardness because my first job out of school, as you know, was was going right. to work for a staffing company. And the same thing, I, I remember talking to this guy who was older than my parents, right? Um, like one, you know, right when I started, and I was having to ask him how much he made, and I thought it was yeah. so awkward, you know. But of course, that is the job, and it's only awkward if you let it be, which you had yes. to learn. I had to learn, yeah, and. You know, age is not a limiter um, yeah. with that, but the experience and confidence and knowledge is, and that's you know kind of the Gary Vee message too is right. You've got to earn your credibility. You know, it's not granted to you, and I think that's right. something that you've done publicly, which I think is really cool. And yeah. and 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 yeah, you know, because most people fail quietly. Not that you failed, but put but put right. you could have failed, right? You could have. You put yourself out there publicly, and that is something that I don't think existed. You know, the potential other than if you were, you know, a professional athlete or some, you know, right. some kind of performer. None of us had that opportunity to do that. And you see how I think it's just so cool because it's so much more real. And I, I would guess people who follow you and um, and and you know, and support you, 
have watched your journey and watch you know, watch your kids get older as they pop yes. in and out of the videos. I mean, that's a really cool thing because they get to know you along the way, even though they don't actually know you. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, the influencer world is a very personal one if you let it be, right? My kids aren't front and center often, but yes, they are on, you know, my stories and whatnot um, every here and there. But yes, you do, as I'm moving into design more so, and I've put that out there, um, you know, telling people I'm investing in business this year. Um, I have received messages that it's like, it's very cool. It's been so cool to see like you on this journey. And I'm so excited to watch your design journey. So yes, I mean, it happens. I think people value um, hard work and, and they, when they see that in others, right? right? So, you know, at times you can be envious of someone who is famous for being famous and just gotten lucky um, because of you know, the family they were born in or whatever. Sure. Um, that, it's easy to criticize that, right? It's mainly envy talking. I certainly you know, wish I, right. you know, <laughs> I, I would trade places with someone. I, know, I, wish, right? I wouldn't mind my family being multi-billionaires, but um it's different when you see someone earn it um, and take risks and take chances. And I think that's what's really cool about that world. And something I, I can tell you, and you probably, maybe you remember when we talked about this, when we first started going into the um, marketing, when we hired our first agency, they asked me to you know, put out content and author content. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I don't want to be subject to that criticism <laughs> and put that out there. And I was I was really cons- worried about it and, and be a, you know, giving people advice. I'm like, who the hell am I to give right. people advice? And then it occurred to me, wait a minute, who am I? Well, um, the owner of a uh, 13 year <laughs> I've owned a yeah. company for 13 years at back at that time. Right. Uh, we place thousands and thousands of employees. We work with Fortune 500 companies and we recruit on their behalf. Like, oh, I'm, I'm an expert in this as much as anyone. And mm-hmm. it was like, it clicked and that went from fear to, to confidence and comfort overnight. And you realize, what I realized is, wow, not only is that not a, a fearful thing, it's, there's a lot of help that can be offered through that. And you can, I mean, it's really cool to be able to help people and have them come back and say, wow, thank you for what you did. I mean, it, that, yeah. does that all resonate with you? It does. And I think an important message in this and for hopefully people that will listen <laughs> is that it, it be confident in yourself and what you know, right? Um, because there is someone else out there in this massive world who doesn't know what you know, whether it's one little snippet of information, somebody else needs that information or is seeking that information. And that's what's so cool about the internet, right? Um, I mean, look at YouTube. YouTube is just a beast that I have not wrapped my head around yet, would love to one day. But I mean, you can learn how to do anything on YouTube. Right. And I think that's, what's so cool, but you have to be willing to put yourself out there. Like you said. Um, and I, and like I said, I just think be confident in yourself and what, you know, um, because someone is searching for what you do already know. Absolutely. I love that you said that, um, YouTube is, I've only recently kind of gotten into YouTube. I mean, of course I've been aware of it, but sure. only in the last year did I realize the depth and quality of content and that yeah. you can learn in, on YouTube in, in a month or two what it would take to learn in college over four years yes. and maybe better. Um, and, and the vast majority of it's free <laughs> and yes. just there for consumption if you're willing to invest the time. And that's the thing that yes. that's always the X factor, right? Who right. is willing to put in that time? And mm-hmm. I think I, I think that's that's a hard part for for people, right? Um, is that yes. it doesn't happen quickly, and you're still, you know, I guess you think you say that you're growing and improving, and you're not like oh, as, as I have so much to learn. Yeah, so that's yes. that's part of it. I mean, so what advice? What other is there any other key piece of advice you would give if someone wants to get in that world? Is hesitant? They're they're on the fence. What would you What would you say to them? Um. So for the content, I'll go both sides, content creator and designer. So I would love to see content creation become a major or something in college, even if people don't, you know, we're kind of shying away from college more so, but I would love to see, because I think it is such an influential world. Um, And I read a lot of statistics on how much brands are planning to spend in the content creation and influencer world. And it's just increasing year after year. Um, 
So I think don't be afraid and don't put content out there. That's for other people. Put it out there because it's for you and it's what you liked doing. Um, yes, someone may learn something like I just said, but don't put it out there because you feel like you just saw Susie Q do a dress try on. And so now you feel like you need to go do that or whatever it may, may be. Um, so that would definitely be my advice on like the influencer side. And you have to, gr I mean, this is any job, but you have to grind. Like I used to look at these people <laughs> and I used to be like, Oh, what they do today? They made, you know, $20,000 because they sat in front of a fireplace and promoted a coffee mug. And now I'm like, whoa, who was I to judge that person and what they do and think that I know how much work went into that? Because especially now, because I do know how much time and effort goes into that one photo, you know, it's a lot. Um, so know that it's not as glamorous as it looks, that's for darn sure. Um, but it's, you know, you're creating your own path and essentially a new career that's in this world. So Definitely. It's not as glamorous as it looks. Um, you got to grind and put the content out there for yourself because you liked it and not because someone else did it and you feel like you need to do it. There, so that, would be, that would be that world. So much wisdom in that. I mean, you, you said you, there's, you, you made a number of great points there. One is it, it reminded me of a realization that we had when we first started creating, um, putting job descriptions on the four corner site, we have about 500 job descriptions on there. And, and of course we analyze the, the data, see which pages get the most traffic. And right. one of our most popular pages was drone pilot. And I, and I, and I laughed about it at first went drone pilot. I don't drone pilot. like that's a, I didn't even know that was, I mean, I've been staffing, but it, that's not that kind of, I didn't know that was a job necessarily. I actually had no idea until you just said that. Yeah. Well, but it doesn't me, surprise me, me. Let me tell you a lot of people search, and, and, and are interested in a drone pilot and what that job entails. And that was sort of a, an epiphany moment for me where I realized, man, okay, so we're in finance, IT, marketing, HR, staffing, you know, corporate world, uh, traditional jobs, but it, the world is so much bigger than that. And, and yeah. so for Zengig, now what we put up are the most popular job descriptions that we can find. And some of them, it, uh, it doesn't surprise me anymore, but the list would probably blow you away of some of the jobs. <laughs> that, that are, are out there and that people are interested in. So to your point, what, yeah, I mean, if, if you're interested in, it, in, in whatever that thing is, there are probably, there is a, probably a really big audience. that's also interested and right. don't try to, um, you know, emulate what someone else has done. And, and I think that's, I see that happening a lot on social media and look, I'm not, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not an influencer, I'm not an expert in that area by any stretch, but what I, from from my own um, marketing experience and 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 the success we've had um, with our with our website and our content is, it took me realizing that I, I for too long and really the almost the entirety of the time you were we worked together we were trying to follow a model that existed that someone else uh, you know had created a, 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 a trail that someone else had blazed and it wasn't until that moment. Um, probably the year before you left where it, it occurred to to me and to us that, wait a minute, we shouldn't be following anyone. We should be the one you know, doing right. our own thing. And and that's led to an entirely different world for us of success with you know, our online presence. And, um, you know, it, the sooner you realize that, the better off you're going to be, I think. Yeah. Which is just wild to me because we were so like, when I first started at Four Corner, it was, you know, not suit, but it was a button down shirt. We were very corporate America, like what you picture in your mind when you say corporate America and to see you sitting in a t-shirt just is like, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen me wear a t-shirt? <laughs> I think I saw you post a picture like in sneakers or something one day. And I was like, is he wearing sneakers to work? <laughs> like I was just mind like blown. I, I still have in my closet, you know, the ties, the belts, the yeah. shoes. And, and and I look at him and go, man, like I, I'm so much, I'm so, it's, this is so much better. And yes. th there's trade-offs. I mean, we, we were already sort of evolving towards allowing people to work remotely. We were doing that as a right. reward, as you remember. Right. And um, I was there for that. Too. Yeah. So we, it was an e relatively easy transition in, in terms of technology and being set up to, to, uh, right. to work. But what, 
is a whole new world is culture. And, and I, there's pros and cons. I mean, uh, being remote versus in the office. Um, but I think the pros outweigh the cons. I think for okay. young professionals, it's, 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 it's unfortunate that they don't have the, the camaraderie and the learning right. opportunities and, and all those things are, I do worry about that. And, I, and it does, I, we do try to find ways to, um, you know, to bridge that gap for the young professionals we hire, but the, the benefits are, are amazing. And, um, right. I mean, look, I mean, I, I yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm a lot happier. I'll tell you that. That's awesome. So, um, well, and I think that's another important point to make, right. Is be open to change and evolution because you never know where it could take you. Yeah. And you, you, you probably are pretty surprised at what you've seen us. Yes, oh. I do. I mean, I follow all the social media and I'm still like, that is a different company. <laughs> It is a different company. Oh, you know, it's better. It's better though. You know, the, that's great. You, were, you remember that we at times had to deal with, you know, I'll, I'll just say drama, um, you know, it, that wouldn't have existed um, in this, that doesn't exist and really has no potential to exist in the situation right. that um, we're in now with people being virtual. And um, I don't, yeah, you know, it's not a criticism at all about companies that still want people to come on site, but it is limiting. Um, and, you, and so, yeah, it's uh it's 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 I never I don't know. Well, I'm I proud of didn't you. See it coming. Well, thank you. It's 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 great. Well, let, let me so let me ask you this. Um, where do you see like what's next? I mean, where are you going? You have the website coming out. We'll we'll yeah. post that. Um, so follow up with me when, it, when it's gonna be ready in a couple of months. But um, where where are you going from here? So I never really wanted to have a full-time career while my kids were young. I Right now, I actually just two weeks ago hired a nanny to come three days a week for three hours. So I usually actually I'm in my bedroom right now. I usually just come to my room and plug away at design work. Um, so that's been really nice. But I see myself, you know, I actually just answered this question on an application I filled out last night for a scholarship to go to a design camp. Um but they had, what, what's your grand plan for three years? If you could like have a great, anything that you wanted to me, I would love to be working full-time on design. Um, because by then my youngest will be in school. She'll be in kindergarten, which is wild. Um, and so I'll be home by myself, which is even more wild to think about. Um, but I would love to be, I don't want to be this huge, amazing, crazy global design boutique firm by any means, I would love to be, there's a famous designer who I actually had the opportunity to speak with live on a zoom last week. Her name's Whitney Parkinson. Um, and she is very well known in the design world. And she has two young kids and her husband is a college basketball coach. And she said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to grow my team until maybe one day when my kids are big. And so had the opportunity to speak with her, which was so cool because she has two young kids and she works three days a week from home. Um, she has someone who comes and watches her children and she's like, that's what I'm going to do. Yes. I still am answering emails on the two days. I am, you know, maybe doing a site visit here and there and taking the kids with me, but she's like, that's just what I want to do. And so I really respected that. And that's kind of the world that I look to be in. I would love to be doing design full time um, and have people coming to me because they like my style and they want to emulate that. And you get to spend time only doing the things you want. And correct. It, yes. And, and that is so cool. And I'll put it under the, the category of freelance um, yes. and it, that I'm a, become a huge proponent of as a better way to work, a more healthy way to work where it, you, know, you you don't you 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 cut you kind of eliminate all the bad and and are just left with the good and the second right. it's no longer good you no longer do it and it is that mm -hmm. simple and um so many examples of that that um that that I see in in different industries and in and environments and so I I don't traditionally think or haven't typically thought of what you are doing as freelance but it 100 percent is um mm -hmm. and and I love it and um man, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for you and, 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 and proud of you too. And, and the success you. that you've had no surprise. And I guess that in some ways that when I told you, Margaret, you're not going to be, you're not going to be a stay at home mom. You're just not going to do it. And I was, so that was self-serving because I was trying to talk you into you know, <laughs> staying, staying with us, but um, 
the, but, but no surprise that you, you found something that you can, um, can you know, do really you'll be very successful with. Cause I, I think anything you were going to do is, is would lead to that path. So, um, very, very cool. Very cool. To yes. See. I'm very, I'm excited. I feel like I'm in kind of like this new journey going again into design where it's something that I've been doing. Um, just kind of in a bit of a different capacity. So again, it's Jake's like, are you changing careers? I'm like, I don't know. Am I changing careers? I'm like, I don't think so. I think I'm just adding a career. Love it. Love it. So last question then, have you found careers in? Huh? Have you found careers in? Oh, well, I think so. Going into this new career, but it's so, I mean, we're two months in, so hit me up in a year and I might be like, Ooh, um, but I think so, because I think what it took was me to do some of these design things and to not understand what aspect of the design that I love and that I am passionate about it, but also not passionate about certain portions of it and to eliminate that portion and to full on go in the direction that I am most passionate about. Perfect. All right. Check yeah. back in a year. We'll make good. Yeah, so that. hit me up in a year. I, I could will. I could have a different career. Well, Margaret McAfee, McAfee Home Designs, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You for having me. And uh we will talk uh, again live in a year. It's yes, a please. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you.